Hi, I'm Ron Bateman, the Sheriff of Anne Arundel County. Welcome to your Anne Arundel's Most Wanted program, a program where we showcase wanted criminals, highlight open cases, and look to you for tips. You, concerned citizens, that share my same goal, and that's keeping our communities safe. You'd be proud to know that your calls have allowed us to put handcuffs on thousands of criminals. So sit back, set your DVR, or grab a pen and paper, and help do your part in catching criminals. You're watching Anne Arundel's Most Wanted. So as you will see this month, we are at the beautiful Kinder Farm Park in Millersville, which is an absolute lovely place. Uh, I used to bring my, my young children here when, uh, when they were small. We used to do all kinds of things here in the park. It's a great place, very clean. And I have with me the superintendent of the park, Bill Offit. Bill, welcome to the show, buddy. Thanks for coming over. So you have some neat things coming up. Um, so let's tell the audience about it. Well, we've got three big special events coming up in the month of October. We, our first is our annual Fall Harvest Festival. Cool. It starts on uh, Saturday, the 10th of October. It goes from 10 till 4. All sorts of kids' games, kids' activities, family fun, food, blacksmithing demonstration, sawmill demonstration, tons of stuff for the family, free to entry. We'd love to have you come down. There will be a rain date on the next day, Sunday, but we're not going to get any rain, are we? No. Okay. Then what time does it start? It starts at 10 o'clock. We are in dire need of volunteers, both adults and teenagers. They can get in touch with us at the Friends of Kinder Farm Park. Go through them at their website, www.kinderfarmpark.org. Very good. And what, what are some of the things the volunteers will be doing? They mainly help out with the kids' activities. We need people to help out with the hay rides, all sorts of things. Cool. Fun stuff. Yes. Second event is the second annual Lifeline 100 Century Bicycle Ride, which goes around the county. Uh, we've got, that's on Sunday, October the 18th. They're giving us a little bit of a break after the Fall Harvest good, Festival. Good, good. We're still getting together. Uh, they've got 100 mile, 65 mile, 30 mile, and 15 mile courses. Neat. And there'll be a free children's bicycle rodeo, as well as a community health fair here at the park. It's open to the public. That's fall free. Again, visit the web at lifeline100.com for opportunities for sponsorships, additional information, and most importantly, volunteer opportunities. Very good. And what else you have? And finally, this is the King. First time we've ever done this event here. The park is going to be doing its first annual Friends of Kinder Farm Park Zombie Run. Ooh. It's going to be on... Saturday, October 31st, which just happens to be Halloween. Halloween. I know my wife's going to be here for that. That's right. We're going to do that that morning. And it's a 5K. And runners will negotiate their ways through a 5K course while the zombies are attempting to keep them from reaching the finish line. And we're looking for, once again, help through the <laughs> Friends of Kinder, Kinder Farm Park volunteers. It's www.kinderfarmpark.org. Give us a call. We'd love to have you. It'll be a great time for everybody. So we encouraging dress-ups? Uh, they've got a whole gamut just for that, as well as the runners. Now, we're not going to have zombies actually running, because that'll take like 15 days to do that exactly. 5K, right? Because they Especially go, you know. the ones that don't have any legs. That takes a while. Exactly, yep. Very good. Well, Bill, thanks for letting us use your park today for uh, Anne Arundel's Most Wanted, and I hope we can get some volunteers to help you out with your events. Sure, we're glad you came. All right, buddy. Thank you. Okay, we have a special episode for this month's Most Wanted. We are going to talk about National Night Out, which is in August, the first Tuesday of August every year, which is Tuesday, August 4th this year. And I have with me Chris Casey, Michelle Corcadell, and Mohan Grover. Mohan's from Shadyside, and Chris and Michelle are actually from County Executive Steve Shue's office. In the, they were considered constituent services officers. Did I say that right? Yes, you Cool did, beans. Sir. All right, so... Um, each one of them has uh, a couple areas that they're responsible for for National Night Out. So, Chris, let's talk about what area you're responsible for. Thank you, Sheriff. Uh, well, on Tuesday from 6 to 8 p.m., the Greater Brooklyn Park Council and the Brooklyn Park Taxpayers Association is having their event at the Lloyd Keyser Community Center. It's located on 5757 Belgrove Road, and it's going to be a great time. 
And what kind of uh, things do you have there? Do you have the cookout and, and all kinds of good stuff? Talk about that. Well, the boys of Northern District are going to be cooking up a lot of good food. Uh, and we're going to have a lot of apparatus from our law enforcement agency as well as the local law enforcement agency, state police, sheriff's office, a couple others. Now, I've been there for uh, several years, and I noticed that normally the canine's there. Uh, is the helicopter going to be there? I know it's going to be down uh, down Shady Side. Is the helicopter going to be there also? I think just Shady Side and Fort Meade. Gotcha. Um, and the, the officers from Northern District will be there cooking up so, burgers. It's a great event. For those who don't know, National Night Out has been around for several decades. It's a chance to bring the community and law enforcement together as a partnership to show that we are a united front uh, to keep our community safe. Uh, and it's throughout Maryland. It's throughout the country, actually. Yes, so, uh, Michelle, what areas do you have? So, um, what we have brand new this year for the first time. Um, we're proud to introduce an Eastern Area National Night Out that will be held at Early Heights uh, Volunteer Fire Department um, on, on National Night Out night. Now they've got a rock climbing wall I heard cool. and a whole host of goodies in the ways of food. So um, I think to celebrate their first area, this is a culmination of the Severna Park area, the Arnold area, Broadneck, Pasadena and the surrounding communities and parts of Millersville coming together. And so um, look for that for the eastern area. Now for the western area, we have of course Fort Meade coming with the helicopter and lots of, and so for more information for the Fort Meade, um, you do not have to um, reside on the base to attend right. and you can contact the base events information um, line uh, to receive the details for that. Um, but we have Crofton, Crofton right. which I believe you're going to be um, visiting us for a period of time. And in Crofton, um, I, I come to you with greetings of a challenge from Captain Goodwin of the Western District. We're going to have a dunk tank and she <laughs> will be um, going on to the dunk tank in her uniform and she's challenging you to step up to the plate when you come to visit. So here's the deal. Every year I try to get to Crofton and then I fly, which I need a helicopter to get down to see Mohan uh, in a timely fashion uh, before their announcements. Um, there was a time where I actually did Brooklyn, Crofton, and then went to Shady Side. So the captain will have to be dunking by herself because I need to be dry to come see, see Mohan. But good try, Captain Goodwin, on that one. So you have Crofton, and you're also talking about Fort Meade. Um, Chris, you also have Brooklyn Park. Now, Shady Side, which I, I, I'm there every year. You know that. So tell the audience about Shady Side. What goes on there? Okay. Thank you. We've been doing this event for about 22 years, and uh, this year also we're going to continue that event. We have our main attraction is the police helicopter, and then we have quite a few all the county agencies, and then we have free food and drinks. We cook the hamburgers and hot dogs right over there, and then and we pizza. and pizza. Thank you. And also, this is a moment we take to honor our <coughs> people who have done good things for the community. And, uh, and we go on, like the event starts at about 6 in the evening, and we also have nice music, Boy Scouts, and, and of course, Sheriff Your Canine is going to be there this year again. And uh, then, of course, uh, we have nice food and drinks and music. Now, every year, at least from the Brooklyn part when I was there, um, you have a lot of people there, 100 plus. Um, I normally leave Crofton just as the crowd starts so I can get down to Shadyside in time because mm -hmm. such a long drive. So, Ron, we've had, um, e even on our, our slowest year, we've had um, over just over 350 people. We've had as much as 600. We're hoping to wow. break that record this year. So please definitely come on out. Gambrels, Crofton, uh, come on out for a great time. They'll be uh, doing the cookout and lots of great activities for the kids and the family. All the agencies are going to be out there, and I think it's going to be a fabulous way of getting out with the family and learning a little bit of how we can better improve our relations between the sheriff's office, the police, uh, our public safety folks, and really form that community. It's so important to everyone. And one thing we need to point out to everyone, that it's free. It's absolutely free. There's hot dogs, there's hamburgers, there's pizza at all these events. The police officers are cooking for you. 
the uh, the community's cooking things up. It's just a great way to get together. And like Michelle and Chris and uh, Mohan said, it's great for the family. So, and even if you don't have kids, it's great for all ages. So, uh, I would highly encourage everyone to come out. I know Mohan; he has upwards of 500 people there. And again, the helicopter is there, the canines there. Canines normally at all the locations, uh, putting on demonstrations and things like that. So it's really cool. Come meet your sheriffs. Come meet your police. Come meet your public safety. Uh, and we'd love to say hi to everyone and, and keep this uh, National Night out uh, just as a vibrant part of our community. Definitely. Now, let's take a quick break. We come back. We're going to start with your Anne Arundel's Most Wanted. Did you find it? You taught him how to hit a baseball. Just like that. Set hot! How to hit a receiver. The strike zone. The net. You taught him how to hit the upper corner. You even taught him how to hit the open man. How much time have you spent teaching him what not to hit? And now for the Anne Arundel's Most Wanted portion of the show. Of course, with me is a regular guest, Corporal Amy Migath from the Annapolis Police Department. Welcome to the show, Amy, and welcome to Kinder Farm Park. Thank you, Sheriff. Who did you bring for us? I've got two from Annapolis today, uh, and actually I have one from the county. The first one from Annapolis is Joseph Neal Martin. His date of birth is June 28th of 1989. He's a white male, 5 foot 8 inches tall, weighing 235 pounds, with brown hair and brown eyes. He has two tattoos on his hand that read self-made and lost souls. His last known address is 494 Keith Road in Lothian, Maryland. He has one open warrant for theft less than $1,000. In that warrant, on March 7, 2015 at 12.50 p.m., an Annapolis police officer responded to the Coles at 260 Solomon's Island Road for shoplifting. The officer spoke to the Coles Loss Prevention Security Officer. The security officer was conducting surveillance in the store when she saw Martin take electronics into a fitting room. Martin left the fitting room and walked past all counters without paying for $279 worth of electronics. A pair of Monster iSport earbuds and a pair of Monster Superstar speakers were stolen. Through investigation, the officer was able to identify Martin as the suspect and obtained this warrant for Martin. The second subject I have today is Christina Bessie Bellinger. Her date of birth is April 29, 1986. She's a black female, 5 foot 4 inches tall, weighing 135 pounds, with black hair and brown eyes. Her last known address is 244 10th Street Southeast in Washington, D.C. She has two open warrants one for failing to appear for theft charges and one for failing to appear for traffic violations. In the first warrant on November of 2013 at 10.50 a.m., an officer responded to the Safeway at 1781 Forest Drive for shoplifting. The manager reported that he saw Bellinger pushing a cart down the aisles of the store while putting items into a bag which was hidden by her coat. The manager confronted her and waited for officers to arrive. Bellinger concealed $85 worth of items in her bag. The officer charged Bellinger with theft less than $100 on a criminal citation and released her. Bellinger failed to appear in court on these charges and a warrant was issued. Also in November of 2013, Bellinger was driving a vehicle when she struck another vehicle and fled the area. Officers located Bellinger and arrested her for failing to remain at the scene of the accident. She failed to appear in court on these charges and another warrant was issued. And my third subject's actually from Anne Arundel County Police. They couldn't be here today, so I'm profiling Jonathan Michael Rogers, a 25-year-old white male, 5 foot 9 inches tall, 170 pounds, with a last known address of 5304 Patrick Henry Drive in Brooklyn, Maryland. He has a warrant for armed robbery with a handgun. This, in this robbery on April 5, 2015 at 12.08 a.m., officers from the Northern District responded to the 5500 block of Patrick Henry Drive in Brooklyn Park 
for a report of a robbery of a citizen. Upon arrival, officers spoke with the 49-year-old female victim, who stated she was delivering a pizza to the 5500 block of Patrick Henry Drive when the suspect asked for change. The victim went back to her vehicle and brought back more cash. The male suspect then displayed a handgun, pointed it at the victim, and demanded money. The victim did not initially comply with the suspect, and a female suspect became angry and took money from the victim. The suspects were identified by a neighbor that observed the suspects just prior to the robbery. An additional Pizza Hut employee knew the suspects by name and pulled up their picture on Facebook. The victim positively identified the people and pictures viewed on Facebook as the suspects. Numerous officers canvassed the area in an attempt to locate the suspect vehicle with negative results. No injuries were sustained by the victim during this incident. An arrest warrant was obtained for Jonathan Rogers, who may no longer be in the area. Outstanding. Folks, you know the drill. If you know the whereabouts of any of those individuals, do not approach them. Instead, call that number on the screen, 410-222-1490 or 911, 24 hours a day. Keep those calls coming in, folks. Your tips are definitely paying off. Amy, thank you very much. Thank you, Cher. And, of course, everyone recognizes our next guest, Detective Sergeant Jimmy DeLay from the Maryland State Police, Glenn Bernie Burke. Welcome back to the show, Jimmy. Thank you for having me, Sheriff. Who would you bring for us? I have three for you today. All three are FTA warrants stemming from DUI offenses. The first one I have is Veronica Renee Eldridge. She's a 24-year-old black female with a birthday of August 14, 1991, with a last known address of 162 Hammerley Road, Glen Burnie, Maryland. On Saturday, December 6, 2014, at approximately 9 p.m., a uniformed trooper was dispatched to Route 97 at Interstate 895 for a motor vehicle collision. Upon arrival, the trooper observed a gold Nissan Maxima on the right shoulder underneath the guardrail. The trooper made contact with the driver and asked if she was okay. She stated she was fine. The driver was identified by her Maryland driver's license as Veronica Renee Eldridge. While speaking with Eldridge, he smelled the odor of an alcoholic beverage emitting from the interior of the vehicle and observed her eyes to be glassy and bloodshot. Eldridge's speech was heavily slurred. The trooper asked Eldridge how much she had to drink earlier in the evening. She stated that she'd not consumed anything, but later in the encounter, Eldridge stated that she'd been drinking shots in Columbia. At this point, members of Anne Arundel County Fire Department arrived on the scene and began assessing Eldridge for any possible injuries. Eldridge was transported to Harbor Hospital Center by Anne Arundel County Fire Department due to the nature of the collision she was involved in. Upon arrival at the hospital, the trooper was informed by paramedics aboard the ambulance that Eldridge stated she wanted the paramedics to drop her off at her house and did not want to talk to the police. After being screened by hospital staff, Eldridge agreed to perform a series of field sobriety tests. Her balance was poor and she was unable to satisfactorily complete a walk and turn or a one leg stand. Eldridge voluntarily submitted to a preliminary breath test with a result of 0.36. While the trooper was conducting the standardized testing, Eldridge made several statements relevant to her arrest. She stated, I've got some problems right now. I've been drinking a lot. Do I always drink and drive? No. Did I drink and drive tonight? Yes. Furthermore, Eldridge was belligerent with the nursing staff at the hospital. When the nurses spoke to Eldridge in a calm tone, she'd state, don't talk to me like that. I'm a person because I'm drunk. Due to Eldridge being transported, an intoxicator test was not conducted. She was given citations and released to the care of the hospital. She failed to appear for court on June 17th of this year and has an active warrant for the DUI offense. The second subject I have today is Jose Laverde. He's a 41-year-old Hispanic male with a birthday of January 9th, 1974. He has a last known address of 8262 Railroad Avenue, Millersville, Maryland. On March 29th of this year at approximately 2.30 a.m., a uniformed trooper was in patrol in the area of 695 and Route 10. The trooper observed a red Toyota Tacoma with Maryland registration directly in front of his vehicle in lane number two. He observed that Toyota to be swerving. The Toyota went from lane two into lane one and then also back into lane number three. The trooper activated his emergency equipment and stopped the red Toyota. The Toyota took several seconds to stop on the ramp of southbound Route 10 eventually stopping on the slow shoulder. Contact was made with the driver, Jose Lade Verde, later identified through other forms of identification. The trooper immediately detected an odor of an alcoholic beverage about his breath, and his eyes were bloodshot and glassy, and his speech was slurred. The trooper asked Laverde how many alcoholic beverages he had consumed, and he stated a little bit. Laverde had a hard time finding his registration and was fumbling through papers, eventually finding the card and handing him a vehicle emissions slip. 
Laverde stated that he was coming from Baltimore and had drank three Modelo beers. As Laverde was standing behind the vehicle, he placed his right hand on the rear tailgate to steady himself for balance. He was unable to perform the walk and turn or the one leg stand satisfactorily. He was transported to Glen Burnie Barrack. An officer of the Anne Arundel County Police Department, Western District, responded to translate for the trooper in Spanish. La Verde was read his DR-15 rights in Spanish and agreed to submit to a test, which resulted in .19 BAC. He was released to his brother from the barrack. He failed to appear for court on June 22nd of this year and has an active bench warrant for his arrest. The third subject I have for you today is Marlon Randolfo Palanco Estrada. He's a Hispanic male, 26 years old, with the birthday of January 1st, 1989. His last known address is 229 Hideaway Loop, Glen Burnie, Maryland. On October 5th of last year at approximately 2 a.m., a uniformed trooper was in patrol in the area of Interstate 97 and New Cut Road. The trooper was traveling in lane number one when a white Acura Integra passed his mark unit at a high rate of speed in lane three. That vehicle was found to be traveling 80 in the posted 65 mile per hour zone. The trooper activated his equipment and stopped the vehicle. He made contact with the driver, Marlon Randolfo Polanco Estrada, later identified through his Guatemala driver's license. The trooper immediately detected an odor of an alcoholic beverage about his breath. His eyes were bloodshot and glassy and his speech was slurred. The driver admitted to consuming four beers. He also had trouble finding his registration card. A check through MVA revealed Polanco Estrada did not have a valid license in the United States. He agreed to perform a series of field sobriety tests. As he was standing behind his vehicle, he began to sway from side to side. During the test, he was unable to maintain heel-to-toe contact as instructed. He was unable to walk in a straight line, and he had to raise his arms for balance. He was also unable to perform a one-leg stand test. He was arrested for DUI and transported to the Glen Burnie Barrack, where he submitted to a breath test, which resulted in a .15. He was later released to a sober driver. He failed to appear for court on June 22nd of this year and has an active warrant for the DUI offense. Very good. You know the drill, folks. You know the whereabouts of any of those individuals. Do not approach them. Call that number, 410-222-1490 or 911, 24 hours a day. Jimmy, thank you very much, buddy. Thank you, Sheriff. Appreciate it. So uh, before I get started for those subjects wanted by the Anne Arundel County Sheriff's Office, I just want to encourage uh, the viewers, if you get a chance, stop by this park. It's right on Jumpers Hall Road. It's in between East West Boulevard and Benfield Boulevard. Um, it is a beautiful park. There's toys and all for the kids. There's uh, paved walking areas or if you want to run. It's just a place as a picnic. It is a really nice place. So if you've never been here, I would highly encourage you to stop by and check it out. And as you heard, Bill Offit uh, said he has several events coming up uh, that are going to start here. He's looking for volunteers. So if you can help him out, it'd be really appreciated. So now, for those subjects wanted by the Anne Arundel County Sheriff's Office, and it's getting a little hot here in the sun, so uh, uh, we'll see how, uh, how this works out. Our first subject is Ray K. Ron Casey. Casey's wanted for child abuse, assault and use of a dangerous weapon with intent to injure. On March 19, 2015, county police responded to Freetown Elementary School in reference to a subject who was injured. A five-year-old boy told his teacher that his father, Ray K. Ron Casey, had beat him with a belt. Yes, with a belt. There were several visible injuries and bruises on his arms and a total of 13 different bruises adorned the five-year-old child's body. His arms, legs, chest, back, and feet showed bruising and red linear marks consistent with that of a belt. The child stated he was whooped by his father approximately five times, causing the injuries. Child advocacy and evidence collection were involved in the case. No surprise there. Eventually, the father did speak with the investigator. He admitted he had hit his son with a black leather belt approximately five times on the buttocks, back, arm, and chest. Wow. Today we are looking for Ray K. Ron Casey, who's a 30-year-old black male with the date of birth of January the 28th, 1985. He's six foot tall, weighs 195 pounds, and has black hair and brown eyes. And his last known address is 72 Magathy Beach Road in Pasadena. Now, our next subject is Benjamin Dexter Lowry. Lowry is wanted for malicious destruction of property and theft charges. Sounds a little generic for the most wanted show, so let me tell you why it's worth your time. 
On April the 16th, 2015, county police responded to an address on Hampton Road in Linthicum for a report of threats. Upon arrival, the victim advised a worker with B&R Property Services had approached him about trimming 15 feet off the top of a tree on the property. Now, the homeowner advised he needed to talk with his wife before agreeing to have any work done and asked if the company was licensed to cut down trees. The worker stated they were and offered to show it if the contract was set up. So the homeowner left the residence for a half an hour and returned to find the workers actively cutting branches off the tree in question. He repeatedly asked the workers to stop cutting, but they refused to. He continued to assist they stop working and get out of the tree. That's when the threat started flying. The homeowner's wife arrived home shortly after. The worker, named Ben, approached a male and female residence and stated they owed $900 for the tree service. An argument ensued, and the homeowner, fearing for their safety, gave the worker $200 to get rid of them. The next day, the worker returned to the victim's address and demanded another $200, stating that the money paid yesterday was just a drop in the bucket. The worker served up some more threats, including to beat up the owner and members of his family. Wow, unbelievable. The second worker, identified as Ron, approached and stated he got pulled over today and got a bunch of tickets and he needed the money. He also had just gotten out of jail and had nothing to lose. The homeowners gave up another $200 because they were concerned for their safety. Unreal. County police did the research to locate the worker named Ron. He's already been served his warrant for robbery threats, of arson, and theft. Today, we are looking for the other half of this extorting combo. Benjamin Dexter Lowry is a 49-year-old white male with a date of birth on November the 14th, 1965. He is 5 foot 9 inches tall, weighs 190 pounds, and has brown hair and blue eyes. His last known address is 759-213th Street in Pasadena. Now, our next subject is going to be Fernando... Rosado. Rosado was on probation for a prior armed robbery conviction. He was supposed to complete treatment. Nope, that didn't happen. He walked out of the 180-day substance abuse program on January the 30th, 2015. A bench warrant was issued for violating the agreed upon terms of his probation. So today we are looking for Fernando Rosado. He's a 30-year-old white male with a date of birth of January 3rd, 1985. He's 5 foot 8 inches tall, weighs 185 pounds, and has brown hair and brown eyes. And his last known address is 8208 Millfield Court in Millersville. Now, our next subject is Raymond Glenn Little. Little failed to appear on June the 1st for his prior assault case and his prior rifle slash shotgun in possession with felony conviction case. And now he has two bench warrants for that. On June the 10th, Little failed to appear for his driving on suspended license, failed to stop after accident involving damage, and failed to return to and remain at the scene of a personal injury accident. And yes, another bench warrant was issued for him. So today, we're looking for Raymond Glenn Little, who's a 55-year-old white male with a date of birth of October 21st, 1959. He's 5 foot 11 inches tall, weighs 210 pounds, and has brown hair and hazel eyes. And his last known address is 563 St. Mary's Avenue in Gambrels. So remember, folks, you know the whereabouts of any of these people? Do not approach them. Call that number, 410-222-1490 or 911, 24 hours a day. I can't stress enough, keep those calls coming in because your tips are definitely paying off, and we love it. So to close the show, I want to thank a few people that allow this to happen every single month. First, our county executive, Mr. Steve Shu. Also, want to thank the chiefs of police, uh, Naples City, it's going to be Mike Pristoop, Anne Arundel County, Tim Altamari, and the Maryland State Police Superintendent, Bill Palazzi. I also want to thank the man behind the camera, Mr. Dale Boyer, and the producer from my show, who I forgot last month, Lieutenant Jennifer Gilbert Duran. Folks. Remember, let's keep Anne Arundel County safe. I'm Sheriff Ron Bateman. We'll see you next time on Anne Arundel's Most Wanted.